when you're sleeping. I was reading, and I get the title from uh, a parable that Jesus taught. It's in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. It's the parable of the weeds. Wow. It's a parable where Jesus was talking about giving a, a story, a, an illustration on how weeds could affect our lives. And I was thinking of weeds for a moment. I was thinking about our yard, right? You, when you think of weeds, you think about your yard or uh, some area where weeds come up. I was thinking about, we seems like over there uh, on, on the grassy area, there's two sets. There's a, there's a set that we, that we, uh, that has a lots of weeds, and there's another one that we kind of control. We're going to dive in a little bit this morning, look at the parable to see if there's something here for you and I. My brother, my sister, God wants you to have as less problems as possible. God's not looking to heap problems on your life. God came into this world to help you live the way we should. Let me look at the scripture here. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Parables, a story, an illustration to help you and I with spiritual matters. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? You know, sometimes we seem to have questions after things keep going wrong in our life. We wonder where they came from. Why is this happening to me? Why do I, why do I got to go through this? Sir, didn't you sow good seeds in your field? Where did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. Sometimes also it's good to label it for what it is. Sometimes we think it's this person, that person. Sometimes we need to put the fault where it is. The servants asked him, do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Now I'm looking at this as a way to help you and I to think why we should live right for God this week. Why should we keep trying to be our best and to not sin and to live a righteous life? Is there some kind of gain in living a righteous life? Or is, is it okay to get off track? Is it okay to quit coming to church? Is it okay? Are there any consequences to not living the life that we're supposed to live? Or can we just sin at leisure? Can we throw off all restraint and get by with it? Can we do our own thing and somehow still have a good life? I think there's something here in this parable that Jesus was trying to get across to his disciples. He was trying to tell them that there is a right way. And you can tamp down your problems if you do some things a certain way. So I'm looking at this scripture in, in, a, in a way to help you and I to not fall spiritually asleep. This is, of course, uh, talking about maybe uh, physical and that. But in the scripture, there's always a spiritual component that God has for us. The first thing that I see here is that when we're sleeping, it invites the enemy to come in our life. What do you mean by that? You see, when we're spiritually asleep, and I, I found it here in, in the scriptures, it talks about sleep a lot. It talks about the common sleep that you and I are, are familiar with, laying our head down and getting our physical rest. 
The Bible teaches that God gives us rest. But there's also a, a, a spiritual sleep that is taught in the scripture. The Bible says in the end time, there's going to be a lot of people that want to fall asleep. What is that all about? There's going to be lots of, there's going to be nations, there's going to be people that want to quit serving God. They're going to be numb to the things of God and they're going to throw off and cast off all restraint. Now, where did you get that? Well, I was, there's several verses, but 1 Thessalonians, where it talks about the end times, where it talks about getting caught up in the air. Let me just give that one. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. Spiritual sleeping is dangerous. What do you mean by that? We think that we can take a vacation from God and there's no effect. I've taken a vacation from my spiritual walk with God. As a matter of fact, maybe throughout the week we all do at some point. Or there's seasons even in our life where we give up on God, we, we say we're still a believer, but we don't practice it, because it's hard. The Bible says that it's a, it's a short, narrow road to hell, but a long, I mean a short, wide road to hell, but a, and a long, narrow road, meaning it gets hard to live for God. Let's be honest. As a matter of fact, the scripture is very clear that sin, is comfortable for a season, but then it comes and bites you. The Bible says that it's easier to sin than to live for God. I want to put a thought in us today to help us that if you live right this week, you're going to do better by yourself. If you make good choices, if you serve God, even when it's tough and you want to go there, if you say no, you're sowing into yourself a good future. You're making decisions that where your life can go better. So I guess what I'm saying is I'm, I'm contributing. I'm saying weeds are problems. I don't know. There are, I, I did some study on weeds this week week and there is a benefit to some weeds I don't know I don't like them I one time the grass was really good there then they do pop up but I try to get Manda on her hands and knees to no I got to be nice Manda's not here she's on her missionary trip to pick as many as possible but weeds do have a benefit so I will say this trouble in our life Trouble does have its benefit at times. Trouble gets us back to God. Trouble purifies us. Trouble causes us to pray at times. Weeds have a way sometimes of renewing the growth in the ground. We don't want them to last forever, though. Weeds have a way of creating life when there is no life. A weed pops up, and then it can create something where some grass. Well, let's continue on. What am I talking about? You could turn me up just a hair. Do you got a little half bottle of water there? Is that all right? That small one there. Three quick things in talking about spiritual sleep while you're sleeping. Number one, the enemy came. Problems came. I will say this. When you choose to not pray, when you choose to not go to church, I got, I got to be careful about this because there's truth there. When you choose to go your own way, you're inviting problems in your life. And I know that's tough. I know that's something. Thank you. Sorry about that. John Dave, you go back to school, don't you? I think you're kind of glad you go back to school this week. You what, you want to stay here? Good, I need some workers. Um, but 
in thinking about this, it's nothing more than a parable, parable. And it says, while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came. That tells me that if I don't act like a pastor this week, then I'm inviting the enemy to come in and create havoc in your life. If I'm a father and I'm over my family, if I'm not protecting the doors, uh, uh, the spiritual doors of my home, and, and I do whatever, I turn on whatever channels, I, I'm inviting the enemy in. I know this may seem old-fashioned, this may, but this is nothing more than a spiritual teaching that Jesus gave to his disciples. This could be a way to help you. Are you interested in having a good life? Are you interested in having as less problems as possible? Are you interested in tamping down the problems? I don't know about you. The older I'm getting, I don't like problems. I do know they're there. And matter of fact, you can do everything right and you're, you're going to have problems. So be careful that you're not misinterpreting what I'm saying. In this world, you will have trouble. So don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. You can do everything right and still have problems in your life. I'm giving us a thought of what Jesus tried to help you and I. How we can live better, how we can, it can go easier for us, how we could have more open doors. So he said, while everyone was sleeping, I thought of this, and I'll be quick on this one. Did you know that when nations sleep, the people in there, that's when they get off track and the hand of God gets raised a little bit? What I'm saying is, while everyone was sleeping, the enemy came. We need to not sleep. You need to try your best to not go the way of the enemy. This is nothing more than a thought for you on uh, an incentive to live right, an incentive to try, an incentive to do what God tells you to do. God gave us a way to live. And I'm not saying it's all going to, you know, work out perfect, but I do know this, that try living without God and see how good you're going to do. So we know going with God's the right way. We know that it's the best life you could live. It, it may be a hard life, but it's still the right way. I don't think any of us here would contest that or you wouldn't be here. So here we go. His enemy came while we're sleeping. If we take a vacation from God, if we get mad at someone, at the preacher, someone in the church, or a bad relationship, and we say it ain't worth it, all we're doing is inviting trouble into our life. That's my first point. The second quick thought is, when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appear. Now, what's, what's there for you and I? Problems were created. When we become spiritually lethargic, when we decide that we could do it on our own, we are inviting problems. Problems are created. You've got enough problems alone. There's enough burden living this life. You don't need to invite the enemy into creating any more havoc in your life, do you? So I'm saying here that they, they formed, they sprouted, and they formed. Things are created. Listen, right before this says, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat. When we're thinking that we're just having a good time and throwing off all restraint, we think there's no consequence to that. Getting back to a place, once weeds take over, it's hard. If you stay at it a little bit, you're never going to get them all. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be things you don't like. But let me tell you, you stay at it, it could be okay. But you decide that you could live life without God. You decide that you can do without them, that you're strong enough. 
my brother, my sister, you're not strong enough for the headwinds of this world against you. You'll collapse. You got to build your life on the rock. It's still hard. The winds will still blow. You're still going to have trouble, but you'll still stand. You'll still weather the, the storms of life. So, I don't know, these are thought to, to encourage you and I not to sleep, to go to church, to pray, to do your part, to give, to, to do what God tells you to do. If it's in his word, that's what I think we ought to line it up. Well, they were created. Well, the first thing is that problems came, problems were created. I don't know, so if I, if I live right this week, I could have left problems. I really believe that's true for me. I really believe if I treat people right, if, I, if I'm kind, if, if I treat my wife right, if this, I think that I could have less problems. So I think doing it God's way is an incentive this week. I don't want to go on vacation and find out that I've lost 10 years of my life to get back to where my need to be. I can't afford to lose 10 more years of my life. So I'm going to keep the enemy at bay as much as possible. I'm going to keep the enemy under my feet. I'm going to walk humbly. I'm going to be careful. I'm not going to strike. I'm not going to go to that place. I'm not going to open up that thing. It's not worth it. I'm inviting trouble. I'm somehow opening up my life into a season of weeds of trouble. And you know once weeds get out of control, it could ruin you. Sometimes there could be so many weeds that you look at it and you say, I got to dig the whole thing up. I, that's what I really need to do on the front again. The back, no. I don't think I'm going to spend the money or the time. Well, maybe one day if... Maybe something good comes, and maybe I will, but it's too hard, so I'm going to leave it, and I'm going, to, I'm going to tend it. I'm not happy with it, but it's the life that I have now. i got to deal with it because this is where I'm at. But I may choose some summer, if John David comes back and do his job, and I may, or I'm joking a little bit, come, I may take up the whole front and side it. I don't know. That's a lot of work, but I do know I'll be better off. Is God speaking to you? Do you got to maybe overhaul something? Listen, it's better than nursing it for the next 20 years and come up at a dead end. If you got to deal with it, deal with it. Then at the end of the day, you will come up better. Well, here we go. We're talking about while we're sleeping. While we're sleeping, the enemy came. While we're sleeping, the enemy created. When we don't do, Joel says it, when, when you give God the first uh, 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 of your life, things have a little bit way of going better. I didn't say perfect, better. The third quick thing. This is a tough one. Hope no one's misconstruing this, but problems were cemented. When we back up and go away from God, some things get cemented in our life that we're going to have to live with the rest of our life. This is a tough one because I'm going to end with grace. Because at the end of the day, grace covers all. At the end of the day, God's grace and God has a way of in the midnight hour dealing with your uh, plantation and watering and helping your garden that's God. That's the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is stronger than anything. He can renew. He can cleanse. He can weed any garden, any life. He can do it. But let me stick with for a second the meaning of the parable because the, the parable had meaning here. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where did these weeds come from? How did that person get there? I thought they were a good kid. But maybe they were living a double life. 
How did they go there? Maybe they made choices that now they're going to have to live with. I'm giving you and I a reason not to sin this week. Trying to do our best. It's a tough one, but it's okay. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So I'm not going to do something that could ruin my life or the, my remaining days or contribute to it. The Lord knows that it's, it's hard enough to, to live with all the tailwinds of life. I don't got to add to it. The enemy did this, or I like that. that first of all, that's good. You got to call a spade a spade. If you're a believer, every problem in your life is enemy source. I really believe that. Even death, Jesus said, he said, listen, I'm going to take away the sting of death. Even death is an enemy, Jesus labeled. So I really believe for a believer, anything you're dealing with that is bringing down your life is, has a source of the enemy. I really do. I just believe there's two things going on in your life. There's God pulling at you, and there's an enemy pulling another way at you. And it's hard. It's hard. But that's why we have the Holy Spirit to help you and I this week. You, were, you can't walk this life alone. God will strengthen you. God will help you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So you can make it. Don't think... In, in this message that you can't live a godly life, a good life. You can. It's hard, but you can do it. You get far enough away from the things of the enemy. Before you know it, it gets easier and easier and easier. There's always pitfalls. There's always places to stumble. But you get far enough away, and you'll say, why did he even live in that hell hole before? While you're sleeping, my, and I'm ending this, an enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, you want us to go and pull him up? The wisdom, no. No, you can't. They got to live side by side. And sometimes in our life, we're living side by side with the effects of spiritual sleepiness, the things that happen in our life, and we don't like them. But I will say this, God has a way of renewing your life and helping you. That's why you have the church. That's why you have redemption. That's why you have, you know, God to help you and God isn't going to give you more than you could handle. The neat thing is, I will say this, when I do cut the front, the front, that's the weed area. Funny thing is, I put the most money in that too. And that's the most weediest area. What's up with that? But you know, when I cut it, and I cut it all, you know what? It all looks pretty good. So what I'm saying is, you could have a good life. God could help you with even the problems that you're dealing with. But I don't want you to get in more problems that you need. I don't want you to do something stupid. I don't want to go out. You don't want me to go out and find some other woman and, and abandon all what, what God has given me. You and That's not right, huh? So what I'm getting at, let's not bring trouble on ourselves. Let's somehow say, it's right to live right. It's right to pray. It's right to do my part. It's right to be a godly person. It may be hard, but it's the right way to go. And when you're doing that, you're creating a rebellion. How do you say that word? You go to college, don't you? Rebellion? Say it, come on. Repellent? Repellent? Okay. Repellent, like that spray stuff. That's how I see it. That the mosquitoes come at you and you're creating something in your life. Oh, one may get you every once in a while, but you're creating a barrier. So by you going to church, you created a barrier. Even if it was hard. Listen, don't allow the enemy to ruin your life. The enemy is out there trying to kill, steal, and destroy. God wants to use you and to help your life. God wants to give you a future. 
God wants to bless you and help you. There's too many youth that are going down the place that where they're having scars to live with and it's going to be hard because they've gone through so much and the enemy is trying to ruin the next generation. It's true. Look around. The enemy is trying to ruin nations to the place where they can't get back up on their feet. They're so lost, they're demented in their mind, and there's, there's so many weeds taking over their life, they no more can see straight. Sounds are, are like our nation sometimes. You turn on the news, you listen to some of the stuff 20 years ago, you couldn't even dream of some of the stuff on TV. And this is what our kids are being subjected to. How are they going to make it? Here's what I'm saying, my brother, I'm done. Let's, let's do our best this week. When you're tempted to pick it up and, and put it in, say, nah, nah, I don't think so. I don't want this weed to grow up in my life. I don't want to have consequences where I do something stupid and spend the next 30 years in prison. I have probably three or four friends, you've heard me say it, a couple in life, for the rest of their life in prison. A couple dead from just one snort. Dead immediately. What I'm saying, there are consequences to how the enemy is doing things. This is just a, a, a thought to help you and I say, no, sin is dangerous. Sin is the real deal. It's so real. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross for you and I to set us free. So what I'm saying to you is choose God this week. It's hard. Let's try. Instead of it, put on this, some music, say a prayer. Maybe those things will go away from you. For, and maybe when you choose right, you'll take another step towards righteousness and what God has for you. Let's bow our heads. Father, we love you. We love you. Help us. Help us. Help us, we pray. Lord, help us, we pray. Let's pray together. Repeat this. Dear Jesus, I love you. Help me. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and Savior. I need help. Lord, I need help. Come into my life. Change me. Help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, God, please, please be with your people. Lord, the devil's a roaring lion out there every week trying to destroy God's people. Lord, let us have a vision that if with less weeds, less problems, that when we say yes to you, that we're doing ourselves a favor. So God, help us to line up with your word every area of our life, every area, from rebuking the devourer to casting off sin and the things that ruin our life. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand for this.